The cast review, of course, it's the final cast review came out from, uh, I can't speak, Hillary Cass. I'm very tired, guys. Hillary Cass issued her final report. It was 400 pages. Uh, and on every single page, it just said, hashtag Glynna was right. Apparently, that's what I heard. Because <laughs> uh, So it's a scathing 400-page dossier into NHS gender care for young people. And it said kids questioning their gender had not been told to disclose history of abuse for fears medics would shy away from offering the drugs. That was one of the really shocking findings that people, kids were told, look, if you've had sexual abuse or any kind of physical abuse, don't mention it because then you might not get these drugs. Incredibly disturbing, coaching them. You know, instead of just saying what's best for this kid, it's like here's how you get game the system and get the medication. And it's incredibly damning. We've seen all sorts of people changing their tune now, saying, oh, I was always against this. And uh, Graham Linehan's been totally justified. Glynna was right. That's been sort of nice for him. But, of course, I'm sure he'd rather none of it had happened. Uh, we've seen Victoria Atkins versus Wes Streeting. She had a quite a powerful bit in the Commons. So I'm, I'm glad that he, she's, I'm glad that the right honourable member, whatever he's called, has changed his mind. But anyway, I hope more people will. But he did say this. And yes. It, and it was really good. That was good. And that's the thing. You've got to let people change their mind. But it's incredible that anyone went along with this. Should be common sense that we don't destroy children's lives, destroy their bodies so that they can never change, never come back. It's absolutely disgusting this was ever a thing. Few people seem to be doubling down. Navarra Media seems to be doubling down, like tearing the cash report. to the, the cash report has been torn to shreds and blah, blah. But most, a lot of people are now going, whoops, we better change size. Yes. I mean, I think it's... Um, I interviewed um, Lionel Shriver um, last night at Lola's in the Hippodrome. It was a free speech union event. She's just got a new book out called Mania. Um, and it's, it's, it's a novel. And it invents um, a new social mania um, in which um, uh, uh, it becomes completely taboo to call anyone stupid. Um, suddenly, um, the latest excessive egalitarian crusade is to pretend that everyone is intellectually equal and anyone who resiles from that is cancelled and they lose their livelihoods and so forth. And it's kind of a satire of various hysterical social movements that have been a characteristic of the 21st century me too black lives matter wokery pokery and of course the trans cult and at the at the one of the one of the things we discussed is that one of the characteristics of these manias lockdown is a great example is that when they begin to fade instead of admitting the people who were their kind of greatest exponents instead of admitting that they got it wrong you know there's never a mere culpa they they just pretend that they were never that enthusiastic about the menu in the first place. And you see this happening all over the place with the response to the cast review. I think it's a good sign that, you know, trans identity ideology, gender identity ideology is beginning to recede, um, that the spell has finally been broken. Even Ruth Hunt, who until quite recently was the CEO of Stonewall, um, has, is, is, is kind of uh, trying to backpedal and say, I was never a fully signed up member of, you know, the trans rights cult. Um, uh, I was always trying to play the honest broker. I recognized that there was a genuine debate. There was a conflict of rights between trans rights and sex-based women's rights. And I wanted to try and facilitate a proper grown-up, good-tempered discussion to try and navigate. It was absolute nonsense. Stonewall had been at the forefront of, of, of advocating for trans rights. They've more or less invented themselves as a kind of trans advocacy organisation. There was evidence when Ruth Hunt was in charge in 2018 of Stonewall trying to rubbish advice that had been distributed in schools by a um, a, a, a feminist campaign group saying um, there's very little evidence that um, puberty blockers are completely harmless. Lots of the children who transition end up regretting it. Um, think before you send them on an irreversible medical pathway and so forth. All very sensible advice, which has completely uh, been vindicated by the Cass Review. That was rubbished by Stonewall in 2018. They encouraged schools to disregard this advice, described it as transphobic and so forth. Uh, and we see this all over the place. All these people who were fully signed up members of the cult um, uh, are now backpedaling furiously. And that, I think, is a good sign. I mean, the big question about the Cass Review is, is this just, you know, one victory in an ongoing war against this particular mania? Or is it the beginning of the end? Is it actually a decisive victory? Is it not just a battle, but the war, which is now coming to a close? And it feels to me, in spite of efforts by, as you say, 
organizations like Navara Media, people who've been at the forefront and are doubling down and have no regrets and aren't changing their minds. Um, in spite of that, it feels like, you know, the war is now coming to a close. It's been definitively won by the gender critical feminists, it feels to me. I think it's been won. And um, you even see this Belgium and ne- Netherlands call for puberty blocker restrictions following CAS review. So they're now following. The crazy thing is that we were the only reason that puberty blockers were a thing in the first place was based on the Dutch protocol. The term used for the practice pioneered in the Netherlands in 1998 and copied around the world of treating gender dysphoric youth with youth with puberty blockers. This was in a telegraph. Why are we following the Dutch protocol? Don't follow Holland. They're li- insane libs. Like you don't follow anything. Everything drugs are legal. Everything's legal in Holland. It's mental. Why are we following in the in the first place? And just quickly on that Navarra thing I quoted or alluded to. Navarra tweeted, uh, within hours of publication, the cast review into youth gender identity services has been torn to shreds. What a waste of four years of research, writes Gemma Stone. And this has received a community note on X. Dr. Hilary Cass OBE is a British honorary physician in paediatric disability. Gemma Stone is wholly unqualified to present an educated rebuttal, so must be considered opinion only. The cast review is an expert review in being accepted by UK and European health professionals. So community notes for the win. Yeah. Um, and um, did you see that, um, is she called Revka Brown? What's her name again? Rivka Brown. Rivka Brown. So, um, you know, she, 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 she shot to fame when she celebrated Hamas's attack on southern Israel on October the 7th. And she later walked that back or tried to walk it back. Um, uh, but she's been embarrassed again. Um, by J.K. Rowling. So she accused, she effectively accused J.K. Rowling of being a Holocaust denier because J.K. Rowling um, questioned whether um, trans people were targeted by the Nazis um, in Nazi Germany um, and um, were kind of, you know, one of the major targets of, of Nazism, which is something that, you know, trans rights activists claim. And because she questioned this, she was accused by Rivka of being a Holocaust denier. Not quite Holocaust denier, but that's how Rivka saw it. And evidently, J.K. Rowling threatened her with a libel suit, and she's now backed down and apologised. Yeah, she's issued that the classic, uh, oh, she's had a legal letter apology. Um, someone said it to me, let's see if I can find it. Did, yeah. On Mar- on 13 March, I tweeted that J.K. Rowling is a Holocaust denier. That allegation was false and offensive. I have deleted it and apologised to J.K. Rowling. That is the old legal letter, the classic. Uh, yeah. You can see, it, you, you can always. She hasn't had an attack of conscience. No, so that's no. not why she's res- resiling on that. That's classic 